Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my video guide on proving the Riemann hypothesis through newly discovered mathematics related gamma and zeta function. In this video, we will explore the fascinating concept of the Riemann hypothesis and the role the zeta and gamma function plays in its proof. So, let's dive right in. It is said that proving the Riemann hypothesis would have profound implications for number theory and prime number distribution. It would provide us with a deeper understanding of the distribution of prime numbers and potentially unlock new mathematical insights. However, as of now, the Riemann hypothesis remains unproven, and mathematicians continue to explore different approaches to extend the domain of the zeta function and shed light on this intriguing problem. Before we delve into extending the domain of the Riemann hypothesis and my journey of proving the Riemann hypothesis, let's first understand what the hypothesis is all about. The Riemann hypothesis is a conjecture proposed by the German mathematician Bernhard Riemann. In 1859, it deals with the distribution of prime numbers and their connection to the zeros of the Riemann zeta function. The Riemann zeta function is a complex valued function defined for complex numbers s with a real part greater than 1. It is defined as the sum of the reciprocals of the positive integer raised to the power of minus s. Mathematically, it can be expressed as zeta of s equals 1 to the power minus s plus 2 to the power minus s plus 3 to the power minus s plus and so on up to infinity. To extend the domain of the Riemann zeta function, we make use of a concept called analytic continuation. Analytic continuation allows us to extend the definition of a function to a larger domain. In the case of the zeta function, we can extend it to the entire complex plane except for the point s equal to 1, where it has a simple pole now, here's where it gets interesting. The Riemann hypothesis states that all non-trivial zeros of the zeta function lie on a critical line in the complex plane, which is defined by the equation real of s equal to half. By extending the domain of the zeta function, we can explore these non-trivial zeros and attempt to prove the Riemann hypothesis. There are several techniques used to extend the domain of the zeta function. Some of these techniques include functional equations, integral representations, and the use of contour integration. However, I used none of these techniques. I visualized the problem cyclically and made a nice garland of zeta values with interwoven flowers from various branches of gamma function, pi function, my own delta function of a tree named factorial tree. When I started reading about number theory, I wondered that if prime number theorem is proved based on Riemann zeta function, then what is left? The biggest job is done. I question myself why zeta function cannot be defined at 1. Why the pole cannot be removed? Calculus has got its own set of rules for checking convergence of any infinite series. But sometime, especially when we are encapsulating infinities into unity, those rules may fall short to check the convergence of infinite series. In spite of that, Euler was successful proving his sum to product form and calculated zeta values for some numbers by hand only. Later Leopold Kronik approved and interpreted Euler's formulas is the outcome of passing to the right-sided limit of this. I decided I will stick to great grandpa Euler's approach in attacking the problem, and I will investigate further how zeta function blows up to infinity at 1 and renormalize the infinity introducing some new mathematical tools which may be missing now in the present context. The job was not easy but easier gets going, so I took all my initial failures easily. Failure provides valuable lessons and insights. I treated it as an opportunity to revise my approach, identify weaknesses, and refine my understanding of the number line. As I belong to an altogether different world, mathematics is not my profession. I do financial analysis for living. I could not engage with other mathematicians and researchers to exchange ideas, gain feedback, and find encouragement. I broke the problem down into smaller, 
manageable components like poles of gamma function was creating problems. An additional factorial function was required to twisted pair with the gamma function in negative domain. An alternate functional equation was necessary to remove the pole of the continued zeta function. Every step forward I recognized that all the problem I had, had also its solution too. I took regular breaks to rest, rejuvenate, and come back to apply some freshly brewed ideas. I celebrated myself on every progress I made. Regardless of how small my achievement was, I realized that I was getting closer to my ultimate goal as the knowledge I had gained. And the insights I had discovered was opening new doors for me. Let me take you through the summary of the results I got. Riemann hypothesis stands proved in three different ways of three different level of complexity. To prove Riemann hypothesis from the functional equation concept of delta function and periodic, harmonic conjugate of both gamma and delta functions are introduced similar to gamma and pi function. Other two proofs are derived using Euler's formula and elementary algebra. Analytically continuing zeta function to an extended domain. Poles and zeros of zeta values are redefined. Other prime conjectures like Goldbach conjecture, twin prime conjecture, etc. are also proved in the light of new understanding of primes. Numbers are proved to be three-dimensional as worked out by Hamilton with his four-dimensional. Quaternions, imaginary number A is defined to be natural logarithm of 2. Logarithm of negative and complex numbers are redefined using extended number system. Factorial of negative and complex numbers are redefined using values of delta function and periodic. Harmonic conjugate of both gamma and delta functions. And there you have it. My video guide on extending the domain of the Riemann hypothesis through the zeta function. I hope this video has given you a glimpse into the fascinating world of number theory and the ongoing efforts to prove the Riemann hypothesis. Please have a look on my work and share it as many people you may think worthy. The links are there in the description. Thank you for watching and happy exploring.